I am Marguerite Miller. I am a collage artist who likes to use vintage papers to create art. Um, I also like to create zines and this is a tutorial that I created a couple of years ago so it's a little bit dated um, but I show you the steps of folding the paper, how to cut it so that it folds nicely and then show you, demonstrate how I go about creating the specific layouts for these pages. I've put some timestamps on the video in case you're looking for specific information. And if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments. Hi everyone, Marguerite here. Um, just recently while I was hosting some online classes on how to make a zine, I came to some important realizations about the process of zine making that I wanted to share with you and to hopefully help anyone who may be overwhelmed with the idea of, of creating a zine or not really knowing what to do or just not knowing how to put one together to make it look cohesive. So first of all, let me talk a little bit about what is a zine and I will go over to my desk in a minute, but I just wanted to hold this one up and use it as an example. A zine is a book that you create um, and collage to tell a story or at least to keep in the same theme um, throughout your book. So it has a cover like this. This one's about um, celebrating 2019 or Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy 2019 as it was. And inside it has pages with, that are collaged and you can have messages in it or not. If you don't want to have any text in it, that's fine and just have it all visual. Um, and then there's the back page like this. So let me start with the fold and I will move over to my desk so that you can see the camera. I'll move the camera to my desk over so that you can see how I do that. All right, so I'm on my desk and I have my paper. This is a plain piece of copy paper, eight and a half by 11, um, also called A4 um, internationally. And in addition to the copy paper, tool wise, you just need a glue stick, your papers, of course, um, scissors, perhaps a straight edge, something that you want to tear, use for tearing paper. Um, a pencil or a pen and that's about it. So let's start with the fold first. Take my paper and I fold it in half. This is ordinary copy paper. There's nothing special about it. It's not extra thick. Um, it's just plain copy paper. I prefer using the thinner paper because it's easier to fold. Okay, so now I folded it in half the other direction. And I've got this crease down the middle, so with this crease I take one side, fold it towards the middle, the other side, and then create this kind of accordion like this. Now you're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut from here to here with the tiniest of slivers that you possibly can. So just cut super thin right at the fold. The point is, is that you open that. See, and I didn't cut enough, so let me go back, cut a little bit more. Right. There we go. So now, 
you create this star shape and then press your pages together. Now you'll notice some, it's possible that you notice that, that your pages are not lining up correctly. Your, your, mar, your, your edges are not lining up correctly. This is the time where you can fix that. So the benefit again of having a thinner copy paper is that you can kind of smush things around until you get it to lie correctly, right? So just play with it, be kind of firm don't be afraid of harming the paper or putting creases in it because you're going to be putting a layer of pages of, of papers over the top. So it doesn't matter if it's creased a little bit. This is your template. And this is what you're going to be making a copy of when you are done. So um, any, little, any little flaws or problems you come into can be um, covered over. Okay. So just press and use a bone folder if you want to, or the back of your scissors, and just make it lie the way you want it to lie, or the way that it should lie. Margins or the edges um, up against each other as much as you can. You can decide if you how you want it, if you want it to this way, or if you want it this way. Some people like the openings at the bottom. Some people like them at the top. That sort of thing. Right, it doesn't matter. Now, I'm gonna take this pencil, or actually, I'm gonna use a pen so that you can see it more clearly. And I'm gonna number the pages so that you can see the order of the pages. And again, I'm not worried because I'm gonna be putting papers on top of this, and these numbers are gonna be covered up. So you feel free you know, to, to write the numbers in pencil or a pen, how big or however small you want. So I have eight sections. And when I open up the zine back out again, you will notice the orientation of the sections on the top are facing this way. And then these are facing the other way. So you'll have to keep that in mind when you are collaging your sections, okay? Um, someone asked me in, in, one of my, in one of the classes that I had previously, how do you collage? Do you collage with the whole page like this, open, flat, or do you put it back into its shape and then do the front page, do these pages, so on and so forth. And my answer is that it's up to you, okay? However you feel comfortable doing it. I like to open it, keep it open flat because it's just allows, allows the papers to glue or to, to be adhered onto this master sheet um, a little bit more, I don't know, straight, I guess. Um, when it's when it's laying flat so as long as I know the the direction of the paper which way I need to put I'm I'm good with doing it this way all right so where do you start where how do you do this um, you know what's the approach everybody has a different way that they do things um, what I do is I do a layer of backgrounds first and then uh, put a second layer and then possibly a third layer with more details and more details and more, de more details. Let me show you this one again. I'll open it up. And looking at it, maybe it will give you some ideas. So if you look at the backgrounds of this zine, you will notice that some of it is in blocks. This 
section here, this is a spread between two pages, and it has the same background that straddles both pages, right? Same thing with this one. This section is another spread, and it also has a background that covers two pages. Okay, so it looks like they took their collaged pieces. Let's see if I have an example. Let me just take something here. They started collaging one section, one whole section, just with background papers, right? Now over here, this one is collaged by itself. This one is also collaged by itself. And same with this, the cover and the, and the back page. So you can choose whether you want to individually collage pages, or if you would like to combine some of it or all of it and do it in sets. So how that would work is you would just figure that you're going to do collaging like this. And it's even possible, what I did in, in one of my zines, is I would do the front and the back pages one and page eight at the same time, with backgrounds, that is, just with backgrounds. Okay, so that is one way that you can approach it, that it won't seem so completely overwhelming because it does seem it does feel like a lot i mean when you're when you're looking at this zine it can feel like oh wow that's those that's a lot of detail right and, and how do you how do you do that so layers is a really good approach to doing that Here's an example of a zine that I've started and haven't, haven't gotten very far yet beyond the, the, um, the backgrounds. So I did it in my four sections and I just put down papers almost like a master board, right? I put down papers in my four sections and now I can choose specifically what topic I want to I want to, to um, focus on. All right, so I'm going to start with this one. My topic for this is going to be Paris. I found this brochure um, at a used book sale and it's got a lot of photos in it and um, just descriptions of places and things like that in Paris. And I thought, well, it would be fun to do this. Plus I have a lot of um, book pages that are in French, that sort of thing. So. Uh, this was this is what I'm going to choose to do as my theme and I'm not going to do any kinds of text I don't think I'm not going to do a quote or anything like that it's just going to be a bunch of collaged images just about Paris and that's it so I'll begin with putting down my background papers <laughs>
All right, so here is what I have for my background pages. If you want, you can rewrite your numbers in just so that you're not um, confused. So I'm just going to put in number one and number eight over here. Small, small numbers. Those are the most important because this is the front cover and this is the back cover. Okay, on this side then it would be two and three, four, five, six, and seven. Is it necessary to refold everything? No, it's not. Um, this is going to be the copy that you, that you scan. Um, so it's not necessary that, that you have the creases um, in here like this, okay? Okay, I'm going to stop right here or pause right here just for one second. Um, I want to put this down here, but I've noticed that there is a, not enough contrast between this and this piece. So what I want to do is I want to put a rubber stamping behind this. So I... Um, I will go grab a rubber stamp and be right back. Okay, so I have a few choices of rubber stamps that I could possibly use. Um, I think I'm gonna use this one, even though it is pretty busy. Just put it here in the corner and I'm gonna use red because I want it to match with this red here. Now I don't think I want my stamp to go into the other page, but now that I'm thinking about it, maybe I do, especially because I've got a little bit of red here. Yeah, I guess I can just put the whole thing across. So let me get a piece of scrap so it doesn't get on my table. And then I will go right across the whole thing. Okay, that looks good. Now, let's see if this will work like this. Yeah. I'm trying to determine if there's anything else that I want to put underneath here. And I could another stamp if I want to. No, I think I'll leave it like that. So I'm just gently pressing down this sticker and I'm not gluing the back of this just in case I want to lift it up and do something else. If I change my mind, if I want to add something underneath, you know, I'm, I'm leaving myself 
some some options and I'm leaving things open so that I can make changes if I want to. This one as well, when I glued this one down up here, I just glued it in one spot right in the middle um, so I can take it off if I want to. I'm not sure yet what I want to do with this space. There's an open space here. So I could add something else or put something underneath it so that I could use that space a little bit better. Okay, so here I am. I have done my second pass of adding a layer. Um, and this is the layer that has more specific items to Paris itself, right? You can see the background. And then now this, these are the little pieces that I've added on this second level, second layer. Now I, it's time to determine if I want to add a third layer and if so, I have a bunch of, you know, rubber stamps that I can go in and add um, a few small things. If I don't want to rubber stamp directly onto the page, I can take an old scrap like this one, for example, and say, um, Let's say I want to put something right here and this has got some blue in it. So in that case, I would take a blue ink pad Oops. Blue ink pad and then stamp on this paper. And now I have a nice stamping that I can use somewhere else here, for example. I can put it underneath, I can put it on top, um, or you know, look around other places and see if I would rather add it somewhere else. And this is this is really this is a lot of fun, right? So um, take your time with this, enjoy it, and don't feel like you need to rush, to, you need to complete your zine all in one day. Um, sometimes you have, you, you're happier with what you do if you take a couple of days to do it. Because if you do, you know, a first pass and a second pass and you're putting on these layers, you know, let it, let it breathe. Step away from it, go do something else and then come back the next day or, you know, a period of time later and then you'll see it with new eyes and be able to say, oh yeah, wait a minute, that, that kind of goes. You know, what if I do something like that, right? That works really nicely. So I think, you know, I'll, I'll do that, right? So don't feel like you need to rush and um, save your little bits that, that you've been tearing off and things like that. Look, I have these these little design elements that were used around some of the advertisements and you know why can't I repurpose it onto something else right if I have some some blank spaces um, you know you can always add things in right just adds a little bit of of interest There's just something else that that catches your eye Right. So these are all just ideas I'm giving you. Um, again, you know, I've left a lot of things loose. If I don't like something, I can pick it up and move it somewhere else. Well, let me quickly put this one down because I do like where it is. But I'm just gonna put it in a very, just a little bit, just a touch. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm gonna work on this a little bit more. I'm gonna pull out my rubber stamps and do us just do it bit by bit. And then I will show you uh, what I come up with. All right, so this is where I am. You are seeing a black and white copy of my zine, what I've printed out. And the reason why I'm printing it out is because I want to look at it, um, just look it over and see if there's anything that stands out that I would like to change. And I have a black and white only because I don't have a color printer at home. I have a scanner and a black and white printer. So I scanned my zine and printed it out. And it's sufficient for me to print it out in black and white because it's basically just a draft for me to look over. And I will show you what I'm looking for. But first, let me, let me fold it and, and um, fold it and cut it out so that it looks like a proper zine and that we can see where all the creases are. When I print it out, you'll notice that there is a margin um, and that is always going to be when you print it out. Some people like to clean it up by cutting the paper out, cutting off the margin. Um, that's entirely up to you, but it's not necessary. It's an extra, an extra step if you would like to do. Okay, so we're folding the zine in the same way. Remember, it was kind of this accordion, right? And then you go back and you cut from here to here. And you will have to do this for every copy that you print. So now we open it like this, pinch these together, and push it around until we get it to do what we want it to do. Okay, so the front is right here. This is page one. Now, let me zoom in so that you can see it really closely. That'll do. So this is Paris, the holiday of your dreams. So what I'm looking for is empty spaces where I could potentially add something else. Okay, here it looks all right. This is good. I, I um, added, this was on the third round of adding embellishments. I put this on here. And also this go by bus. I added a stamp over here and this little strip of map. Now on this page, you'll see quite a lot of places where I could add something. I can put something here. I can put something along here. I can add something over here. And what I ended up doing, I'll show you um, the color version again, is I added a stamp here and I added a rubber stamping down over here. And then this is the back. Now, it's also important to sign and date your zine. And here is where I could, for example, take a color pen or something and sign my name and put the date in there as well. So see if you can find a place on the back side of your zine where you can. You could also put it on the margin right over here. 
that's fine too. Okay. So here is my final piece. What I'm going to do next is I will scan it and then I will take it, take my file to a professional printer like Kinko's or whatever, FedEx office, however it's called, and I will get them printed there. I'll probably print something like 20 copies and then I will have them ready for uh, exchange for whatever kind of um, zine exchange we've got uh, going on or with friends or whatever. If you have any questions, please do let me know. Uh, write them in the comments section. Um, I would be happy to answer any questions that you have, any concerns that you have about your project, um, anything like that. Hopefully this was helpful for you and it will help you to create something that you're happy with and that you will be happy exchanging with others. Thanks for watching.